Hi, I'm Dr. John Bates, CEO of Eggplant. Today we're going to be exploring issues around smart automation, particularly in focus of the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and robotic process automation. And we're going to look at three conundrums for regulators in this area. First of all, let's talk about the Internet of Things. And I'm going to give you some interesting examples of food for thought. Tires. You put them on your cars, you put them on your trucks. They're just a commodity, right? Well, imagine if tires became connected. Imagine if, by putting a small sensor in the tire wall, just like Pirelli and other manufacturers have done, you could then gather information from the tire, such as pressure, such as temperature, such as even how much wear is on the tire, and connecting that wirelessly to a small telematics box on board a truck or vehicle. You could then add into that location, speed, and send that up to a cloud where data could be gathered. Suddenly, a tire has become more than a tire, it's become a source of big data in an Internet of Things context connected at the edge. And what does that mean? Well, what it means is for a company like Pirelli, they can move from being a vendor of tires, commodity items, to a vendor of big data analytics. You can offer things to your customers in the fleet management area, such as fuel efficiency services. Is my tire overinflated or underinflated? Am I wasting 10 cents a mile? You can offer safety services. Uh, is the tire dangerous? Is the driver driving dangerously? Well, you can offer location aware replacement services. You need to pull in to get replacement tires on these particular ones and turn into this location. But most interestingly, and what I offer up to the regulators for consideration, is tire as a service. Rather than buying a tire, imagine that you lease it based on how much rubber is being used as the tire drives. Let's look at another example, connected coffee. So I have also done some work in the area of connected coffee machines and with a major Italian manufacturer, La Cimboli, and you can see me pictured there with their connected coffee machine. Now that machine connects at the edge and then to the internet. So you can do from the factory remote diagnosis, you can do predictive maintenance, so you know when parts are going wrong and they can be replaced without uh, any downtime. You can do remote control, you can do usage monitoring, compliance monitoring, is the right person authorized to put the beans in? But most interestingly, you can do coffee as a service. You can pay by the cup because you can lock down that machine, a services company can make sure they're putting the beans in and replacing it. And then just like you're renting Rolls-Royce aero engine uh, airtime as you cross the Atlantic, so you can rent coffee, pay as you go. So what does this mean? Well, we've looked at tires and we've looked at coffee. What does this mean to the regulator? What it means is assets as a service or everything as a service we are likely to see new finance models where you don't buy things. It's more along the line of leasing, but in a much more flexible way, because if you can track the asset, if you know things about the asset, you can do compliance around the asset, you can offer everything as a service in a pay-as-you-go model. And think about the market structure. The, between the purchaser um, and the manufacturer, you've got a whole financial services structure with a services partner who's going to service that, with a compliance monitoring framework, and with a finance intermediary who's actually providing the financial product for everything as a service. Now, the asset has to be smart. You have to track it. You have to be able to lock it down. But this is the kind of model that's now possible with intelligence at the edge. So that's your regulatory conundrum number one. Everything as a service. For suppliers, this is offering higher profit, it's offering lower cost of entry. For buyers, there's no capitalization, you're paying as you go. But for regulators, what does this mean? A completely new financial layer on everything. Topic number two around smart automation focuses on artificial intelligence, and particularly where artificial intelligence makes the Internet of Things. 
There's nowhere more topical than autonomous vehicles. Putting a brain in a vehicle so that it can drive itself. There you can see a lovely picture of my Tesla when I was living in the Bay Area and I put thousands of miles on autopilot driving them down the highways there. But the topic that I'm going to make you think about is the one around ethics. In this picture you can see an autonomous vehicle driving down the road at 60 miles an hour and it's turned a corner and found that uh, a lady, a senior citizen, is crossing the road, a kid has run out into the road after their soccer ball and the car has a couple of choices. It knows that at the speed it's travelling it's either going to run over the kid, the senior citizen, or drive into the fence and kill the driver. Now, if that vehicle was being driven by a human, a human can say, I panicked, I didn't know what was going on, I, I'm ever so sorry I ran over uh, the senior citizen. But a car can't do that because it has cycles, it, ha it has time to calculate, it has rules. How does it make the decision? How do you program ethics to go along with that artificially intelligent autonomous vehicle? That is a question for the regulators. Similarly, when you're rolling out an artificially intelligent autonomous vehicle, and here we can see some snippets from NASA's Orion space vehicle that's going to be going to Mars, that's going to combine AI with very advanced digital cockpit systems to get those astronauts there and get them back safely. And I've worked a little bit with this system. How are you going to test that system? Do we need to use AI to test AI? And what are the issues around releasing a system and proving that it's been tested to the adequate levels of regulatory oversight? So regulatory conundrum two, the ethics and testing requirements of AI-powered systems. Who decides the rules of life and death in the ethics of such systems? And how do we know that a system's been tested adequately and is safe to release? My topic number three around smart automation focuses on robotic process automation. Robotic process automation is using automation to augment or replace humans in a repetitive process. This might be software and or hardware related. And if you look, for example, behind me, you can see a banking application, Citigroup's digital banking application, being automated by a robotic process, which is logging in, entering customer details, checking the balance, and then logging out again. And you can see the process following along. Now you can do this with a multiple workflow of multiple apps working together to try and remove manual human tasks. Now a very interesting question here is, will robotic process automation replace humans? Here you can see a recent headline from the BBC saying that robots will replace up to 20 million factory workers by 2030. Now we all know, because this has been happening for hundreds of years, that automation will replace humans, but will it also bring new jobs and will it also augment humans? The topic I uh, offer out to you here is that the other side of replacement is augmented intelligence, another form of AI in which humans plus algorithms become 10 to 100 times more powerful than a human alone. So what is the regulatory conundrum here? It's really if we are going to replace or augment humans, what does this mean for the regulator? and particularly taxation and regulation. So robotic process automation, if, as the BBC and others are saying, we are going to replace humans, how are we going to fill in the fact that those tax-paying humans are no longer there? Should we be taxing robotic processes? And similarly, in augmented intelligence, 
If humans are going to become some new super species whereby an accountant suddenly becomes uh, an incredibly powerful augmented human who can do you know a hundred times the work of an ordinary accountant, is that providing an unfair advantage that should be regulated? Do these humans have an unfair advantage and what do we do about the haves and the have-nots when it comes to being augmented? This is the final conundrum. So I'll leave you with these three. Regulators, good luck in your work.